I want to begin a little bit about how this progression of persecution has really taken root in, uh, in India under the uh, leadership of Prime Minister Modi since he took power in 2014. Uh, we've noticed a dramatic rise in cases of Christian persecution throughout the country in various states across the country. And there are several different forms of manifestations that we see happening throughout the state of India um, in terms of how, these, how the persecution manifests. Uh, one of these indicators comes in the form of, well, let me backtrack a little bit. Significant issues facing Christians in India include physical assault of people, properties, places of worship, anti-conversion laws, blasphemy laws, impunity, forced reconversions to Hinduism, and general discrimination in India's legal and social structures. Physical violence and impunity, let me unpack that a little bit for you today as well. Attacks on Christians and other religious minorities often go unpunished. In most cases, Hindu nationalist political leaders use anti-minority rhetoric for political gain. This form of speech in part inspires more assaults on minorities when the police and local authorities take no action against radicals and emboldened um, extremists. Year after year, attacks on minorities are recorded in greater number than before, especially since Prime Minister Modi and the BJP took power in 2014. Anti-conversion laws, these are formally known as Freedom of Religion Acts. Anti-conversion laws allow state governments in India to regulate religious conversions and criminalize forced religious conversions. Essentially, it gives the power of conversion to the state or local bureaucrats or state level bureaucrats to verify whether or not these conversions are considered to be legitimate conversions. And Hindu radicals use false accusations of forced religious conversions, conversions to harass pastors and justify violent acts against Christians who are um, leading people to Jesus. Currently, anti-conversion laws have been enacted in Uttar Pradesh and eight other states across India, and more are being considered in other states throughout India. Um, all publicly called for anti-conversion laws are being enacted and explicitly citing the false narrative of fraudulent mass conversions to Christianity and Islam as a justification. Now, this is an important piece to um, highlight to um, our audience today. The Whenever the BJP begins or the Hindu radical forces begin to perci precipitate these uh, anti-conversion laws to state level uh, legislators, there is a massive uh, public campaign that perpetuates uh, these fraudulent narratives of Christians uh, conducting mass conversion ceremonies to induce uh, people to leave their faith. This is a complete falsification. It is a false narrative that does not take place at all. It is lies and is used by the Hindu radicals to uh, mobilize grassroots support for these anti-conversion laws that eventually are used for persecuting Christians in particular. And I'll, I'll dive into this particular aspect a little bit more later in my remarks here. Um, the other, other items that we see this persecution uh, manifesting is through forced reconversions or gar wapsi. Radical Hindu nationalists use violence and social pressure to force religious minorities to reconvert to Hinduism. These programs are called the gar wapsi, which translates to the homecoming essentially in, in English. India also has a blasphemy law that's often used by Hindu radicals and essentially that criminalizes any action that offends the religious sentiments of another. It's very poorly worded and it's often misused by Hindu radicals to accuse Christians um, essentially on no grounds whatsoever. Uh, Hindu radicals use false blasphemy allegations to harass pastors and to justify their violent acts. In fact, many times when this law is even incited or when a violent uh, incident takes place in a church or in a prayer meeting or whatever uh, Christian function might be happening, many uh, mobs of uh, Hindu radicals will show up at those churches or those gatherings, beat up those who are participating in the service, including the pastors. And finally, if and when the police arrive, it's the Christians that get arrested. It's the pastor, it's the parishioners, uh, the Christians who are participating in the service that end up getting arrested because under this law, they've incited the religious feelings of another and therefore are going to be prosecuted. 
or arrested in, in any way. The other way that we see this, we see persecution manifest throughout Indi India is through social boycotts. Hindu radicals and local villagers will pass local resolutions that outlaw the practice of Christian Christianity in that particular village. And as a punishment for Christian members of the, of the village, they are so they are socially boycotted. Now, this means their businesses, uh, whatever way, whatever economic life that they're participating in, whatever kind of social function they might be participating in, they are boycotted, cut off from that from this community. This means they are discriminated against unless they agree to recant their faith in Jesus. Often Christians are disallowed disallowed from collecting water from the village well. You know, from buying and selling goods in the village or interacting with other Hindu members of that village. Another form where we see more, um, more um, prominent ways that government is particularly doing this in addition to the legal structures is through government restrictions, FRCAs and SC benefits like scheduled, uh, scheduled caste benefits. The government of India uses several programs to discriminate against Christians and other religious minorities to stop funds from Christian ministries from entering into the country. So outside money coming in, NGOs must adhere to the FCR regulations that the Indian government has put forth, which is in theory, this is good, but in practice, it's discriminating against any form of uh, religious or Christian uh, ministry that wants to fund ministries in India. These regulations allow the government to scrutinize and ban any foreign funds from coming into the country that it, it, it finds concerning. Now, like again, in theory, this may be a good idea, but in actuality, it's being used to suppress Christianity in whatever way they can. This is used to cancel many Christian ministries. We've seen this happen over the last several years. Several uh, high profile Christian ministries have essentially been targeted under these FCRA regulations. Scheduled cast benefits, an affirmative action program for low caste peoples. Um, these are essentially denied to Christians and Muslims by law. And this stops low caste individuals from converting, from converting to Christianity to Islam because they would automatically lose government benefits. This is especially harmful to Christians as 80% of Christian population in India come from low caste uh, backgrounds. Um, so in a sense, what I've tried to do here for to kind of start us off is to give a broad picture of where we see persecution manifesting in India as it relates to the Christian community. Um, ICC has worked uh, on with the global globally persecuted Christian community since 1995. India has been one of those countries that has progressively gotten worse. And even more so since Prime Minister Modi and the BJP took power in 2014. One thing I will still, I wanna highlight uh, in particular is the anti-conversion laws. Um, which I'm gonna show a brief PowerPoint with our audience today. I want to highlight a report that we've done. You can find this on our website at persecution.org. This is exactly it's, it's a case study on a anti-conversion law that was enacted early this year in Madhya Pradesh in 2014. I mean in 2021, where we essentially examined what is the effect of this law on a state in a state like Madhya Pradesh. Did, do we see any kind of reaction or any kind of in, um, increase in persecution? And the numbers definitely spoke for, spoke for themselves. We saw an increase, a dramatic increase of cases. And this is under, uh, while COVID restrictions are in place in Madhya Pradesh, meaning social isolation and so on. Um, but we saw a dramatic increase in cases of violence and number of other pieces, a number of other uh, sectors. And I wanna just make this report available to everybody um, who's watching today. Um, please let me know if you'd like a copy, you can, a uh, hard copy, I can um, get that to you as well, but you can also download it from our website. Um, one thing that I also wanna mention here, you know, is the constitution of India guarantees religious freedom in all, its, in all of its uh, facets to all Indians. That means you can convert, that means that you can practice your faith, 
and you can uh, propagate your faith, which means um, you can share your faith. And if you're a Christian watching this today, you would know that sharing your faith is a fundamental part of being a Christian. This means that we share our faith with our neighbors, we share our faith within our communities, we share our faith wherever we go. This is part of being a missional Christian and living out your Christian life. And this is a right and a freedom that in theory is guaranteed and protected by the Indian constitution, which obviously is not the case as we've seen already on the ground. Persecution is manifesting in many forms um, and this needs more and more attention. So if India wants to move in a direction of a healthy, robust, vibrant, liberal democracy, this is the fundamental freedom that needs to be guaranteed for all, uh, for all Indians. A few other uh, pieces from the Madhya Pradesh case study. We recorded 49 incidences, approximately 4,000 Christians uh, were affected. 47 churches were closed during this time. We even surveyed 500 Christians in Madhya Pradesh and you can see the results there. One of the more highlight, one of the more prominent pieces is uh, nearly 80% were concerned for their personal safety, for safety while worshiping at church or at home. This is not even in public. You're in your own safe space in, in, a, in a church or at your home. And you're not feeling safe because, because of what? The Hindu radicals are going to come and um, attack while you're worshiping. This is, this is unacceptable and the world needs to be aware of this. Um, I wanna also highlight our annual report where we dive into this a little bit more, the general trends that I've covered in my remarks. Um, you can also get this on our website. Um, you can download it there and I welcome you to do that. Um, with that, I will conclude my remarks for now. Uh, but I do want to say one more final item here is that if you're a congressional staffer and you are, you are working on India issues, you need to be paying attention to this because this trend line is growing and it's not just ICC that's making this case. There are several other organizations that watch Indian in, uh, religious freedom conditions uh, actively, including USERF, which actually recommended India to be a CPC country twice now. If we are not paying attention to this trend, we are gonna look back and uh, regret the fact that we did not challenge India on this issue uh, more severely. Um, I wanna actually bring my, my remarks to a conclusion now, and I, we're gonna play a video from our president, Jeff King, on some taped remarks from our previous event that we held um, regarding um, persecution in India. So please, can we play the video? Well, unfortunately, we do a lot of work in India. We're uh, constantly bandaging victims uh, or repairing churches after attacks. Uh, the work never ends there. And the reason, the reason that is happening is, look, it's because of the BJP. You have the BJP as a party, and then you have, the, you have the head of the BJP, which is Prime Minister Modi. Now, Prime Minister Modi stands at, he is, he is the core player behind all of this. And unfortunately, he's uh, a politician, so he won't come out and make the radical statements of what he actually believes, uh, but the rest of the BJP, BJP players do. And their stance, uh, their intolerance towards those of other religions and their insistence that India only be Hindu uh, is problematic, especially when you're a head of state. But their work on the anti-conversion laws, as well as the, the impunity, which uh, perpetrators act under when they're attacked on the street level you'll see either a, a pastor or a congregation or maybe it's a church planner or evangelist uh they're constantly surrounded harassed uh, church congregations are invaded beaten uh intimidated slapped around etc etc this kind of action is going on all the time so the dynamic what's driving this is the impunity that, that they operate under so typically, if anybody's arrested, it's the victim, it's the Christian that's arrested, unfortunately. Uh, and what goes on is that, first of all, this is encouraged by the party. This is encouraged by the BJP. It's spoken about. There's a lot of hate speech. And then sitting at the top is Prime Minister Modi. Modi will never denounce uh, these attacks. He'll never say we're going to go after perpetrators. Uh, so unfortunately, the attacks go on and off.
Thank you for the video. Um, again, that was our president, Jeff King at International Christian Concern at an earlier event, offering some remarks on what uh, persecution looks like in India. Uh, with that, I will conclude my remarks.